Okay, so next up is Brandon. Brandon, for, for those of you who haven't seen what Teams looks like inside of a, and again, there's a lot of leadership on the call. And if you haven't seen what Teams looks like from an admin perspective, Brandon is going to give you uh, uh, some of the highlights on, on a lot of the features that we see people interested in uh, when they come to work with us. Uh, and so, Brandon, if you wouldn't mind, just take it away and show us what the Teams uh, system looks like. I'm going to be all over the place uh, as I give this demo, but there's a couple things that kind of I want to kind of latch on to what Dan had already showed as far as our TCAP system and and, and a few things around as, as you plan for onboarding or migrating into uh, Operator Connect uh, via our TCAP system. You know, if you do leverage this builder for the IVR call queuing, whatnot, the one call out here is when you're creating this account up here and then you're pushing that up to Microsoft, it's actually going to go create the resource accounts in Microsoft and then it's going to bring them and sync them into the TCAP system. The one piece I want to highlight is as you plan this, these resource accounts, if they're expected to receive uh, an external phone call, they also need to be licensed they will not get licensed by TCAP. We don't control your licensing. So just know that you'll need to go apply a Teams phone resource account license to whatever resource account, again, that's receiving that external phone call. If that doesn't happen, obviously that, that account will never activate for a you know, number assignment that Dan had already demonstrated. So that was just a quick call out there. So back into the Teams admin center, we could spend hours going through this. I'm going to I'm gonna to try to just touch on maybe four of the main features we get asked about, and then kind of show you the demonstration from the user experience perspective, what that looks like. Um, the really neat thing about Teams as your phone system, if you're already a Microsoft um, consumer for you know, Office 365, Azure Active Directory, and the, the whole suite of Microsoft services, really the power of bringing the phone system into Teams is, you now don't have these disparate systems where I'm sure some of you can relate to, you know, user onboards or user leaves the company and now you've got to, to swivel chair and remove a user from Microsoft, re, remove a user from your Avaya system, and you got to keep track of all these moving parts or you've got to automate the whole process through an OSS or a backend system. The nice thing about Microsoft is it's kind of becomes your one stop shop for all user management. So as you create your users and you onboard them in your Teams Admin Center, they are present for you to manage from a phone perspective, a team chat perspective, uh, your ability to uh, apply policies that allow them to host webinars, meetings, et cetera. Um, so the, there's a couple of users we're gonna focus in on, one of which is this OC user. I have that logged in on the actual Teams client. Again, I know Garcia was mentioning we're on a Zoom. The reason for that is that when I make a phone call, if we're on a Microsoft webinar, we, I'd get kicked out of the webinar. So I want to be able to show you what Teams client is doing when I, I pop that phone call into the client. So user management, is it's pretty straightforward. You can, you can apply emergency policies, addresses to the, to the users. You can assign voicemail policies. Uh, you can also put some of this in the user control. The user can can set up their own voicemail policies if that's you know something the company wants to allow. And you can get a quick view of all policies assigned to the user um, if you're trying to figure out where you need to steer this customer from a policy and compliance perspective. Uh, as we move down the the menu, you know, as Rick had mentioned earlier, you know, you we can integrate phones, ATAs you know, meeting rooms, all kinds of stuff into Teams natively. Uh, I have in this demo account, we've, we've attached three uh, Teams enabled phones. They're, they're currently offline, but if they're online, then we could set up simul rings to ring the phone to the user uh, along with their Teams client. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with the, the uh, devices here. You can update the device remotely. You can Mac, you know, do MACDs with the device, auto provision, add custom configuration profiles, you know, maybe you're changing a program of a button or you want the phone to behave in a certain way. That can all be done right here within the Teams Admin Center. SIP devices, I don't have anything 
connected here, but you, you know, let's say you have a, a PRI, maybe it's going to a, um, a, a, you know, a legacy fax machine of some sort that still requires some kind of RJ connection. You could connect your ATA here and then connect that dial logic, that dial plan back into your, your analog system, the fax machine, whatever it is. So let's keep moving down. A lot of stuff here. I'm going to skip over the meetings and messaging policies because that's not our focus. We're going to kind of dive right into the voice. And as Dan had already demonstrated, this, this is a different demo tenant. We've already granted consent to G12 communications. We've acquired seven numbers. We've taken those numbers and we've assigned them out to various users and voice applications. Voice applications being auto attendance, call queues, uh, things of that nature. There, as Dan said, you can you can definitely manage the user assignment here. Uh, from a G12 perspective, we find with our existing customers, we, you know, there, it causes a bit of confusion. So we tend to steer people and, and our clients into kind of separating the, the PSTN piece from Teams Admin, where, you know, we encourage you to do your user to phone number assignment out in our TCAP system just to ensure that we have a true sync between what's going on in Teams and what's going on in the PSTN side of the world on our, on our side of the network. Um, again, as Dan said, if you don't, every so often we'll go out and sync check and, and we'll, we'll correct that, but we have seen it cause confusion and, and it causes questions. Then as we move down into call policies, this, as we get into policies, whether it's call policies, call hold, call park, et cetera, th this is where you have the ability to create very custom call policies or you know, dial policies and then attach them to users based on your company requirements. That could be compliance, it could be quality assurance, it could be any number of things. Um, the one that I've created for this demo is called call recording with screen pop, where I've enabled call recording for the callers that get assigned to this policy. And then I've also enabled transcription that, that allows for real-time transcription as that phone call is in progress. And then of course, re it records all of that and stores it for later review. Uh, and then uh, lots of features in here. The other one that I'm gonna demonstrate is the screen pop where you know we, we get asked by clients all the time if we can support any kind of screen pop for their CRM, whether that's Salesforce, HubSpot, Zendesk, whatever. I'm going to demonstrate a screen pop into a Zendesk environment just to show that for calls coming in, I can take and set up a, a custom URL where I can pass in that tag. In this case, I'm going to pass in the phone number that's calling and we'll screen pop and pull records associated to that phone number. Call hold policies, this is where you're going to set custom defined call hold music based on your company needs, you know, whether, whether it's for specific users, departments, or, or just globally for your entire company. This one just has the default teams hold music. Caller ID policies, this is uh, where you can control rules around how caller ID is presented back out as, as you're making outbound calls to your clients. This can be done here. The other place that I'll, I'll touch on is back in our team cap system. You can also control it from out in the PSTN side of Operator Connect. Uh, the number I'm gonna pick on is this 4742 number where I'm actually gonna present it as a different number to the outbound um, call. So I'm presenting it from a 406 number, which happens to be the auto attendant number. So maybe what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to elicit a call back and I want them to come back into, maybe it's a toll-free number or whatever the IVR number is, but I want them to come back into the main, main line of the company versus calling me back directly. Again, you can do that within the TCAP system or you can do it back in the Teams Admin Center, depending on how granular you want to be with your caller ID policies. Um, Another one that I'm going to demonstrate is the emergency calling policies and how you tie that to the user, how you set up network locations based on could be switches, um, SSIDs for Wi-Fi, wireless networks, or uh, trusted IPs, et cetera. 
and then tying it to how we send notifications uh, depending on your compliance needs for 911. Uh, I'll, I'll just touch on two things really quick here and then I'll demonstrate it later is based on your needs, maybe you've got a compliance or a security or a safety officer that you also want to bridge into the call. One thing Microsoft supports is if I, as a user, dial 911, Microsoft has the ability to conference in that safety or compliance officer if that's part of your corporate requirements. Uh, the last thing it can do is it can, it can actually notify external resources as well. So maybe it's a cell phone um, or, or a third party PSTN number that you wanna also notify of that emergency call. Today, I'm just gonna demonstrate a notification only where I've set up a notification group where it's gonna alert somebody within the organization that an emergency call has been placed. Again, voicemail policies, this you know, has to do with, do you wanna transcribe the voicemail? Do you want to mask profanity? I would say if your customers are calling in and they're swearing at you, I'd ask why your customers are calling and swearing at you, but you can definitely mask that out and um, keep that. And I, I haven't tested this, so it'd be interesting to see if it gives the dots or if it just completely wipes the word out. I'm guessing it, it puts the little asterisks in. Uh, and Dan, I don't know if you know if you've tested this or not. I have tested it and it does just, uh, it masks it. it. It doesn't get rid of it puts altogether. The, we we wanted to the, test it. That's, that's what I was laughing. <laughs> puts, puts the stars in. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured. Um, and then the, the other piece that, you know, from a, a, a corporate compliance perspective, that's probably um, going to be of interest if, if you've got CISOs that, that care about how and where data is being sent, you know, it, you might want to turn off the sharing the, the improvement to Microsoft, you know, so that they can use your analytics to improve their service. Uh, again, that's gonna be based on your company requirements there. So again, lots of stuff we can get into, <laughs> but I, I know we're running really short on time and I really wanna show you some of this stuff. So uh, again, auto attendance, call queues, these can be set up to, to be as robust and powerful as the traditional call queues and auto attendance you're used to seeing, whether that's, Avaya, Cisco, Mitel, um, Microsoft has the ability to support, you know, that level of complexity. Um, some of the high level stuff is, is how, how and where you deliver that call based on business hours. You, you can set up, you know, your own audio greetings. You can have Microsoft use their, their voice, their text to voice to do it. You can change between the different, you know, voice temperatures is I guess what I call them between male and female um, and, and then make decisions based on what to do with that call you know during hours after hours as well as during holidays um, I have only added Christmas uh, for the upcoming holiday but you know again can make a decision based on if if it's during the holidays that I've defined the 25th and the 26th then it's going to make a different decision than what it's doing up here in the normal business hour call flow. <clears throat> and then again, tying that to back to that resource account that was created, again, ensuring that that resource account also is licensed to receive that call. This is a very basic, I don't have a, a call queue in here, but you know, when it comes to making call routing decisions, like as an example down here, pressing one for sales, I have this going to a direct user you know, most companies we see would send that to a call queue that then can do hunt groups and distribute that call out to a, a you know, a set of users, a, a group voicemail, you know, whatever your, again, your requirements are. <laughs> and then the last piece that I'm gonna touch on is the locations. This is the emergency address and network topology stuff. Uh, essentially, if you're, if you're needing to provide that 911 Ray Bomb compliance to your users in your locations, this is where you would set up and you'd map out your network <laughs> locations. Again, could be based on subnet access points, switches, the, the actual ports on the switches. It, again, you'll have to sit down and do the planning on how you want to do that. For our demonstration, I'm tying a subnet to the G12 corporate office 
and then I'm tying that subnet to an emergency location, which is the actual emergency address. From there, I'm, I'm creating a topology that ties those network locations into whatever my corporate topology needs to look like. So I've established G12 headquarters. I've tied that subnet that I created down in network location to the topology. And then the last piece that I've done is I need to be able to trigger this location based on some, some trigger. And in this case, I'm gonna trigger on a public external subnet. This could be your corporate VPN. This could be your, you know, your corporate egress point to the internet. However, your client is going to present to Microsoft. That's that's the external untrusted IP that you would put. When I say untrusted, I mean public, publicly routable IP in the trusted IP here to trigger on. And when the Microsoft client registers and it if it matches that IP to Microsoft, it will tie my user to the topology that I've defined. Again, this network location is the address that gets defined in emergency addresses. And you can see that I've got an address that's tied to a user. An important call out here is if you expect the call to route properly from G12 into the PSAP, the address must be validated in order for that mm -hmm. call to route to the correct PSAP. So if I'm calling from this address, I would expect it to, to route into, um, I don't know if that's King County, King County in Washington or not, but I would expect it to route into whatever that county PSAP is or the city PSAP for Kirkland, Washington. If it's not validated, it's not gonna route correctly. It's gonna go to a national call center and then we'll have to be manually routed from there. So with that said, uh, there was a lot there. I went over it very quickly. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of emergency calling and how it notifies, okay. and then a, a quick call park, call recording, and, and transcription, and, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, I believe. So with that, let me, I'm going to start with, I've got a lot of stuff open here. So I'm going to start with a user, and I'm going to call into this 966 number, and I'm going to park that call just to show that, you know, back to what Garcia said earlier, you know, the, there's a misconception that the team's phone system is not a fully featured phone system when in reality it, it is. So we should be getting a phone call here in a second. So there's our call. I'm going to accept it. So let's say this user wants, you know, wants to get this caller to someone else that can help. You know, there's a, a few different ways they can do that, right? They can transfer um, with the client. You can actually do a warm transfer or one of the newer features is you can actually park the call. This call park is a policy that can be defined on a per user basis. So you don't have to necessarily enable call park for everyone, but I'm going to go ahead and park that call. It's going to disconnect this user from the call. It's going to give him a call park code. I know that's kind of small, probably hard to see, but the code is 107. So now this user just needs to notify whoever they're going to tell that, hey, I've parked a call. Your code is 107. You can now pick that call up. So I'm going to come over to the client. This user is also enabled for park, parking calls. I'm going to click this, this button down here called parked calls, and it's going to prompt me for the code. I'm going to dial 107 and I'm going to pick that call up. And it's going to pop that call open. And now we've got the call established with this OC user one. From there, some of the newer features for Microsoft that are pretty cool are this turn live caption on, transcription, and, and call recording for, for audio recording. Live captions, you know, one of the use cases I could I could see this being used for is for the hearing impaired. So if we turn this on, you can have it prompt for language each time or you can save it so it doesn't prompt you again. Um, I'm gonna just confirm that as English. I'm gonna mute the one side and you're gonna see here in a second, now we've got call caption going so that now if I'm, you know, hearing impaired, I've got a visual representation of what's going on on the on the call. 
<clears throat> and it awesome. does it for both parties. So I'll mute this side, unmute this side, and try not to hang this call up. Got to unmute my other headset. Nothing like technology using six headsets to do this, but here now you've got <laughs> the second side doing this. So I've still got you know, the, the closed captioning going, but now I've got transcription going on where that's going to be saved as a record for, for later you know, review, whether that's again for compliance or for um, QA, you know, quality assurance. That's also doing, uh, I'm doing an audio record. So when I stop the recording and I hang this call up and you don't have to stop the recording, you can just hang the call up. It will tie those records to the phone call where you can access the, the call recording and the transcript at a later date. That gets uh, saved out into a SharePoint um, location. Um, real quick for 911, you'll see the address is tied to the user. Um, I'll skip that demo. The last one is I'll do a quick screen pop so you can see the, the screen pop in motion. And then we can go to Q&A real quick. Um, so I'm going to call into this 720 number. When the call arrives, it should pop the, uh, the screen to, I have it popping to Zendesk. Yeah, there's the call I'm going to answer. It's done a screen pop. Notice it's got the phone number in the URL. It's going to, based on Zendesk, it's going to move that into a search function and it's going to pull a record associated with that phone number. But obviously, the possibilities become endless here um, for what you can do with that screen pop in, inside of whatever CRM that you're using. So there's the quick and dirty demo. <laughs>